You may not have noticed, but in many of your favorite American movies, in some primo Hollywood productions and big time blockbusters, there's often product placement. More times than not, this product placement features watches, and more specifically, Hamilton watches. It's no accident that in hit flicks like Indiana Jones, Tenet, and Nolan's Interstellar, and also in Tenet and loads of others, you'll notice Hamilton watches. Even in a movie like Matrix, you'll spot a Hamilton watch. Despite the blatant product placement, these watches often go unnoticed by most viewers. Even I didn't initially noticed these Hamilton watches in my all-time fave films like Indiana Jones. And you know what? I've always just kind of imagined Indiana Jones rocking a classic watch from the 30s or 40s, sort of elegant but sporty. Well, a watch just like that appears in the latest Indiana Jones movie. And guess what? It's a Hamilton. Every month, as per tradition, our official sponsor, the jewelry store, Rosa Spina in Bergamo, and their super nice and charming owner, Stefano Spoilers. So we couldn't miss the chance to get our hands on a new package, a new unboxing moment featuring what we're really keen about right now, that is some iconic Hamilton watches that have played a big role in equally iconic films. I've already taken a little peek inside, but I'd love to share the grand reveal with all of you. So come on, let's flip the camera around and see what's hiding in here. I've had a sneak peek already, so it's not a genuine unboxing, but let's go through it together because I just couldn't wait any longer. On my wrist is a cool Kalamai Panda G 50 green watch with a steel bracelet, but that's another story. Unpacking our package, after browsing Rosa Spina's stunning collection, I picked out and asked Stefano to send me three one-of-a-kind watches. These watches are special because it lets us explore what goes on in Hollywood and the movie industry, which many of you, like me, are huge fans of. So inside this box is a watch, the first one I want to chat about, that I find really neat, especially considering its price. It's the affordable Hamilton Marth. However, this one is a 38mm version that came after the original 42mm model. I like the original, but wasn't completely sold. I think this updated 38mm model is just perfect. Although it does lose a tiny bit of charm with the absence of the Eureka inscription, which is a nod to the movie from which this watch originates. Both Archimedes and Marth, the character in the movie, exclaim Eureka. I won't give away any spoilers, just in case you missed out on a masterpiece like Interstellar. Believe it or not, it's almost been nine years since the movie's release on October 26th, and that definitely doesn't feel good. This waterproof watch has an automatic movement with a pressure crown and cathedral-style hands ensuring optimal readability. What's unique about this watch is that it was made just for the movie. The Hamilton brand didn't even have this model before Interstellar. The watch comes in two variations, forging a crucial bond between a father-daughter duo. But let's not spoil that story either. It's the watch that Marth's father gives to her before leaving. And there's a certain backstory to this watch that I won't share to avoid spoiling the film for you. However, I can tell you that the version of the Hamilton Marth watch used in the movie was a custom designed piece that featured a motor on the back used to... The second hand of the watch marking Morse codes which naturally have something to do with the plot of FIV. It's a watch that I've always liked a lot and honestly it's just as good in person. It's a watch I would absolutely love to have in my collection and in this Rosa Spina unboxing. I'm also revealing the prices, which I don't do often. But since we also have our tags, I want to do it with you guys. So here it is. It costs 945 euros, which is a fair deal for a watch of this kind. Hamilton, like many other brands, has substantially raised its prices. 945 euros. But I also have to tell you that Rosa Spina offers really exceptional discounts especially to friends of the channel so if you're interested you can contact Rosa Spina and ask for Stefano mentioning that you're subscribed to Tulsi for some special treatment but talking about, about the Marth and its first version specifically in a limited edition with a 42 millimeter diameter our dear friend and content creator Francesco Bianchi who is a massive watch enthusiast and collector will share some anecdotes about it Hi Alessandro, when I heard on your chat that you're making a video about Hamilton in cinema, I knew you'd love to show your specific model, the Marth and the Cat Video Zero. The Marth is perhaps the most important watch in Nolan cinema because it plays a crucial role in the 2014 film Interstellar. It's the watch that the protagonist Cooper gives to his daughter Marth before he leaves for his space adventure. It's a watch that Hamilton designed and made specifically to meet the needs of the plot with an integrated motor 
that can move the hands on command. Then in 2019, Hamilton decided to sell this watch, first releasing a limited edition of 2,555 pieces, a tribute to the film, and then due to its huge success, adding it to their regular catalog, and most recently in 2020, releasing a 38mm version to cater to fans' requests. This here is the limited edition MAF, which is pretty much identical to the regular 42mm version, except for the box, which was designed by Nathan Crowley, the set designer for Interstellar, and references a key moment in the film. But I won't share any spoilers. Instead of diving into a detailed description of the watch, I think it's important to note that there's really no way to know if a 42mm MAF is part of the 2,555 pieces from the limited edition. Hamilton initially made the 2,595 pieces, then given its huge success, added it to their regular catalog at the same price. So for a while, you could find both versions for sale at authorized dealers. The result is that the 426's real collector's value of this watch is in the box. The second watch that Hamilton adapted and redesigned to work with Nolan is the Kakibilo Zero, which features in some of the final scenes of Tenet. In its standard version, this watch is no stranger to the big screen, appearing in other films too, like in Edinburgh's scenes in Predators, and as worn by Mad Demon in The Martian and The Rock in Central Intelligence. For the film Tenet, though, it wasn't just a massive product placement operation combined with the release of two limited editions, one with a red hand and another with a blue hand, but Hamilton had to show all their skill in serving the director. In fact, two unique versions of the Bilo Zero were made available, one red and one blue. I won't explain what this means to avoid any spoilers, but these versions displayed the time with hands and also had a lead timer on the dial. Rumors say that Hamilton produced dozens of prototypes for use during filming and even sent a technician to the set to ensure the correct functioning of the features customized for the film, mainly the timer functionality. However, these features remained exclusive to the film only. Very different from the situation with Marv, which was a bit from Eltra. The commercially sold models made in 888 pieces don't have all the usual features of the prototypes in the film. They are just normal watches, but they stand out from the usual Bilo Zero or Black Titanium simply because of the touch of red like in my case, or blue on the second hand, plus the cool box, again designed by Crowley. Here I've shown the red one, but there's an identical blue version out there. That about sums it up for these models. Thanks to Alessandro for his attention. Let's now check out the watch of the day, which is this classic Hamilton Ventura made famous first by Elvis in Blue Hawaii, then the unforgettable Men in Black. One last note about the Bilo Zero, if you have it, watch out as the external anti-reflective can damage the sapphire's beauty. Another watch tied to Hollywood, even if indirectly, is another Hamilton, in this case the Hamilton Pulsar, which you'll all recognize by this button. As you can see, it lights up the display, which then turns off but it still remains visible. It's kind of an always-on feature from back in the day. A revival of the first digital watch by Hamilton in 1970, the Pulsar itself. A futuristic watch to be a 1970s watch, and it still makes the hearts of many enthusiasts race. It's also a well-made watch, not your usual digital watch, but a watch linked to Hollywood, particularly Matrix, because there's also a special limited edition black PVD version with green screen. And instead of a usual back cover, there is one that hints at Matrix and those reigning codes that became an icon of the movie. Here, even though Hamilton is not on the wrists of the main characters, they try to revive the link between a futuristic and digital world and a futuristic and digital watch of their own in The Pulsar. It's a watch that honestly appeals to fans of the style because of its appearance and build quality, even though it's of course a watch you have to understand. It's a watch for those seeking that kind of watch a digital one that can remind them of a time when we were dreaming about the future. I mean, we've reached the future now, and I think it's not quite what we imagined. But anyway, Stefano has sent us the price tag for this watch, just like with the other one. 845 euros, that's not little. But I can tell you this, it's proportionally less for a digital watch of its caliber than, say, the latest Tissot PRX Digital that you may have seen. Despite costing a little less, it literally feels like a 10 to 15 euro Casio. In this case, we're dealing with a design object, something that truly made history in the 70s in the world of digital and electronic watches, and it shows 
It's a watch you need to try on to understand, to experience the quality of the finishes. It's not exactly my cup of tea, but I can confidently say it's a quality piece. Then there's another watch linked to Hollywood, quite recent actually, and one I was eagerly waiting for. It's by Hamilton, of course, and I must say I really liked it a lot, but was disappointed by one little detail. Let me show you Indiana Jones's watch. As a kid, this is what I imagined Indiana Jones's watch to look like. To me, guys, this is precisely what I thought Stuart Little should be sporting when he was traveling around the world and escaping the Nazis in the early 1940s, late 1930s, during his adventures. Remember that iconic moment when he jumped off a Zeppelin, a blimp, to evade Nazi surveillance? Yeah, I think this was his watch. The ultimate Indiana Jones watch. It's not gold, unfortunately. It's just a simple steel box painted in gold because it would cost too much otherwise to be a fun tribute watch. Honestly, I would have immediately added this watch to my collection if it wasn't for the fact that it's surprisingly a quartz. Yep, it's a quartz, even though it's not exactly cheap, hitting a price of 775 euros, although Rosa Spina is providing some deals for anyone who's interested. But it's a watch that just doesn't quite hit the mark for what it should be. A beautiful manual watch with small seconds fitting for an adventurer like Indiana Jones, who does the job I always dreamed of as a kid, being an archaeologist. It falls within the American classic collection. And it couldn't not include Indiana Jones Hamilton watch with the latest installment of the franchise that has accompanied us since our teenage years, especially for those of us in our 40s. I do think it's a bit of a missed opportunity to create the ultimate Indiana Jones watch, if only it was a manual watch, not necessarily gold, but something a bit more in line with the 30s and 40s. That said, there are similar watches out there, although they are not exactly the Indiana Jones watch like this Hamilton, especially in the vintage department at slightly higher prices, perhaps with a gold case, but still able to provide a kick of nostalgia. However, to be honest, as an Indiana Jones fan and as a lover of all the films in the franchise, no vintage watch could satisfy me the way this watch that Harrison Ford actually wears in the latest Indiana Jones film. In short, these adorable watches take Hamilton to another level for enthusiasts as they are relatively inexpensive entrance level watches that represent so many emotions we've experienced over the years. And even though every so often these releases, like the Marth, the Indiana Jones watch, or the Matrix Limited Edition Pulsar are overlooked. They are little treasures that I believe can contribute to any collection, just for what they represent, both for watch lovers and for movie fans. Choosing between these three watches is not easy, although we could think, in my case at least, of excluding the Pulsar, not really being my dream watch, and possibly between the two movies that move me the most, Interstellar and Indiana Jones, even if Indiana Jones reminds me of my childhood, my teens, and many hours spent in front of the screen as a movie fan and wannabe archaeologist, the fact that it's a quartz maybe makes it a little less appealing. So even though, honestly, I would love all these watches in my collection if I had to choose only one, I would probably say the 38mm Marth in this configuration and diameter is just perfect, recalling a style that I definitely want on my wrist. That's my call, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. A big thank you to Stefano from Rosa Spina Jewelers in Bergamo. And to all of you for tuning in. I'd love to chat more in the comments about your thoughts. I'll catch up with you next time with this gorgeous Indiana Jones Hamilton watch here on Talk. Bye.